Hello, everybody. I'm Assembly Member Jen Lunsford. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am your state assembly person for District 135, which is the east side of the county. That's the towns of Penfield, East Rochester, Perrington, Pittsford, Menden. And we are going to be um, talking today with our good friends from the Monroe County Library System who are going to talk to us about all of the incredible digital library options that our uh, local library system offers. I myself sit on the library committee and I'm the chair of the subcommittee on digital libraries. So I'm very excited to provide this to you. Um, with that said, I'm going to hand this over to Amy and she's going to get us started. Thank you, Amy. All right, I am going to just get my screen share up here. Leave something to look at besides my face here. Okay. All right. So good afternoon. Uh, thank you to Assembly Member Lunsford and her District Director Ellie for organizing this event. And thank you to all of you for being here. My name is Amy Deshanza, and I am joined by my Outreach Department colleague, Marin Kyle. And today we are going to talk to you about a few digital library resources you can use to access ebooks, audiobooks, and more from home or from on the go. Um, our main focus today is going to be on the Libby and Hoopla apps. Marin will cover Libby and I will talk about Hoopla. And then at the end, I'm going to sneak in a short plug for Medici TV. Uh, we hope that everyone leaves this session having learned something new today. Well, just a little bit, a little of information about me. Um, I have been working in libraries for about 13 years now, and my favorite thing about being a librarian is that it gives me the opportunity to meet and engage with all different types of people. Um, I also like to read, and I primarily uh, gravitate toward fiction. I enjoy coming-of-age stories, sagas, and character-driven novels about dysfunctional families. Um, I use Libby and Hoopla regularly to access audiobooks. Do you want to uh, unmute and share a little bit about yourself, Marin, before I keep going? Sure. Um, I guess I will just say I'm not as big into the audiobooks as Amy is. Amy is uh, big on audiobooks, but I also love to read and I use uh, Libby all the time to download uh, ebooks for my e reader. And apart from things related to this presentation, um, I have been with the department for about a year and a half now, and I love the job. And when I'm not doing library related things, I'm usually uh, walking my dog or running around with my kids. Excellent. All right. Um, I'm going to talk about the outreach department briefly before we really get this going. So uh, the outreach department is the, the Monroe County Library System outreach department, I should say, uh, is a small but mighty operation. You're actually looking at half of the department right now, Marin and myself. Um, our mission is to deliver library services to populations who are traditionally underserved because they may not be able to access the library on their own. Uh, these populations primarily include older adults who are housebound, people with illnesses or disabilities that keep them at home, and people who are incarcerated or institutionalized. Um, I think that the, the service that we are best known for is our in-home library service, and that program is basically what it sounds like. Uh, we select items for program participants and deliver them to their homes every six to eight weeks. Uh, we do our best to reach as many people as we can, but it's just Marin and I providing this service. So uh, we are always accepting applications, but sometimes we do need to place people on a waiting list. So uh, for those of you who live in Fairport and Parenton, the Fairport Public Library offers a similar program called the FROST program, which stands for Friends, Readers, Outreach Service Team, and they have a lot of great information about that program on their website. So uh, back to the outreach department. Uh, we also run a micro collection lending program. 
for senior living facilities in which we assemble a variety of library materials, anywhere from 50 to 150, depending on the site's preference. We box them up and deliver them to the location. So participating sites receive a delivery of new library materials every other month. Uh, we serve about 25 locations currently. Outreach staff provide support to incarcerated individuals and people impacted by the criminal legal system. Uh, we visit the Monroe County Jail and chat with folks about local library and reentry resources, as well as maintain a resource list for justice involved individuals that we mail out to people who are incarcerated across New York State. And we do some other things too, but I don't want to take up too much time talking about the outreach department. So if you have questions about us or our services, um, we can make sure we'll get our contact uh, information out to Ellie. So, all right. The last the thing that I wanted to touch on before we get started is library cards. So to access the resources that Marin and I are discussing today, you do need to have a library card. So if you are not sure if you have one or if, if you're not sure if your card is still active because maybe you haven't been to the library for, for several years, you can contact Marin or myself and we can take a look at that. Um, if you know you don't have a library card, but you're interested in using these digital resources, you can apply for an e-card online on the Monroe County Library System uh, website, and that card will only give you access to digital resources. So if you want to be able to go to the library and take out materials too, you'll just want to get a card like you see on this slide. So in Monroe County, we are uh, we just have like one card for the whole county. So if you got your card at Pittsburgh, you can use that card in Greece or wherever you wh whatever town library or city library you visit. So um, so in you know in our presentation today, we are going to um, be screen sharing. We'll be showing sometimes this presentation, and sometimes we're going to be demoing the services that uh, we'll be demoing Libby and Hoopla. So um, if you feel like you're not seeing the right screen, if you can like indicate that in, I guess, the Q&A and we'll, we'll remedy that. So I am going to stop sharing now so that Marin can share and she will start uh, talking about all things Libby. All right. Sorry about that. It moved where the unmute button was on when I started screen sharing and I had to find it again. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I am going to be talking a little bit about a service through the library called Libby. Get that to full screen there. Yeah, okay. Um, so if you have used uh, an ebook service through the library before, you might be familiar a little bit with Libby, or you might have heard of a different app called Overdrive. Overdrive is the company that helps us to provide all of the ebooks and audiobooks. And they used to have an app that just had their own name, but now they've transitioned to this new app called Libby, which is a lot more user friendly. So I'm excited to share with you about it today. Uh, just a few facts about Libby. Um, through Libby, you can borrow ebooks and audiobooks. And through the Monroe County Library System, there's more than 58,000 titles available. Actually, probably even more than that now because I made this slide a minute ago. Um, there's the ability to browse by subject. There's got different guides and topic areas that are curated by our librarians. Libby also offers access to the Great Courses Library Collection, which I will touch on when I do the demonstration. And through the Monroe County Library System with Libby, you can have up to 12 items loaned at a time and eight items on hold. Now, um, I just want to mention, you might be thinking, hold? Uh, does it want to? Of course. There we go. Um, why do you have to put an ebook on hold? Isn't it just a computer file? Shouldn't I be able to borrow it whenever I want to? Um, shouldn't everybody be able to borrow it at the same time? It's not like there's one physical book that has to be carried around. So the way that ebook lending works usually, and we Amy will talk about how this is different with 
Hoopla. But with Libby, you have to think of it similar to being a physical book because the publishers set up agreements with the libraries. You know, they don't want us to just buy one digital copy and let everyone use it all at once. They would lose a lot of money on their books that way. So we purchase individual copies of the digital books to loan. So sometimes you might have to wait for one, but there are lots of options for um, other books you can read or listen to while you're waiting for the one that you've got on hold. Okay, so I am going to go through a demonstration using the Libby website. Um, if you do not already have the Libby app, depending on what your device is, you can go into the app store for that device. If you have a phone or a tablet, the Apple app store, the Google Play store, uh, newer Kindle fires, you can also go through the store there and you can search the word Libby in the store and Libby, excuse me, Libby by Overdrive is what will come up and it'll have the little logo that you can see here. It's kind of a, fa a little face of a girl with a bookmark sticking out of the back of her hair. That's what the icon for the app looks like. So you'll know you have the right app if that is the icon that you see. And if you are using a computer, you will go to libbyapp.com which is what I'm gonna use for this demonstration, uh, but it looks pretty much exactly the same as it does on a device. Uh, it's just sort of what comes through the middle of my screen would be like the app screen that you can see here in this picture of a phone. So I am gonna go into my browser now, and I actually reset this so I could just show you quickly what it looks like the first time that you use it. So you can see here um, that it says, welcome, and do you have a library card? So if you don't have a library card, like Amy talked about, you need to take care of that first. But once you have your library card, you can click on yes, and you have to tell it what library uh, you're going to be using. So you click on search for a library. Oh, and let me say, excuse me, before I get too far into this, I have a couple of uh, documents that I'm gonna email uh, to uh, Assemblyperson Lunsford's office that have uh, sort of an overview of these basics and also some tips and tricks for some more advanced things. So pretty much everything I'm gonna be going over, you can get uh, documentation on it from them. So don't worry if you miss something or if you think you might forget it later, you will have a reminder. So back to the demo. When you get to this page, you search for a library. Now I'm just gonna type in Monroe County, um, but when you do that, make sure you get the right one because you can see the first thing that came up here on my screen was Key West, Florida. So you wanna make sure that you have the one that says Rochester, New York. Because we offer Libby to all the libraries in the county, it doesn't really matter uh, which branch library is listed. You can see it says Arnett, Arnett branch here. That doesn't matter. As long as you can see the one that says Rochester, you're in business. So you click on that and then it will give you the front page for the library, but you need to sign in with your library card. So you can see here, it says sign in with my card. And when you click on that, it gives you an opportunity to put in your library card number which is that number on the back of your card below the barcode that starts with 29077, I think. So I actually copied it so I wouldn't have to try to type it out. And you sign in and it says, all right, here you go, you've got your card. Yeah, ooh, I'm gonna skip that for now. Okay, so let's say you've used it before, here you are, you're coming into uh, Libby and this is the library page. All of the navigation for Libby is across the bottom of the screen here. And I will be discussing what all of these different sections mean, but we are gonna start here with the, uh, with the library tab, which is the one that has this little picture of a building um, that I actually think it looks like the, the Rundell Library downtown, the, the old historical building. So that helps me to remember. And you can see here, it says Monroe County Library System across the top. 
There's a bunch of things on this uh, main page that help you to browse. You can kind of think about going to this page as if you were stepping into an actual library building. So there are some filters and things across the top, and I'll mention a little bit more about that when I get to searching. But if you scroll down, you will see things like um, hot titles. So you can imagine that sort of like in the front of a library building. I know often near the circulation desk, they'll have a display with like all the most exciting new books that everybody wants to get. And they often have a shorter loan time. That's exactly what this is right here. And you can click on any of these titles and look at more about them. I'm going to get back to these things in a minute. But if you go further down, you'll see here's a section that says Hispanic Heritage Month. So again, just like in the summertime, you might go into your library and see a summer reading display. And if you came back into the library in October, maybe you would see some Halloween items or some cozy up with a good book mystery titles on a display. So just like that, there are these sections on the page in Libby that are like a display in your library. Currently, it is Hispanic Heritage Month. And so we have a selection of titles for Hispanic Heritage Month on the main page for our library. These two other things I just want to touch on briefly. Guides are sort of like going into different departments or rooms of the library. So just like in the library, there's a children's room. You can click on the kids button on the main page and it'll take you to where all of the children's books in Libby are. Same thing with teens. There's a section just for mysteries and a business section as well. One other thing that's available um, besides the ebooks and audiobooks through Libby is, well, they have a section that's referred to as extras. And the extra that we offer is the Great Courses Library Collection. So um, if you're familiar with the Great Courses at all, it's a video series with uh, lectures taught by, you know, uh, prominent professors in their fields. And this particular collection has over 250 of the most popular courses available. Um, so there's hundreds of videos on science, history, health, art, and more. And you can use one of your Libby loans to get a one week unlimited access pass to that. So that is what you will find on the main library tab, which again is this little building. Let me take a minute now and hop over to the search section, which is the one that looks like a magnifying glass, and show you how that works. Now, I did mention that, um, well, actually, first, this is where you go if you think you know exactly what you're interested in and you want to find it. So I'm going to search for a book. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with a popular one by Louise Penny, because I think a lot of people are fans of Louise Penny. And I'm going to search for a world of curiosity. OK. Now, here are the search results that come up for that. And I will go through what those mean in just a moment. I did promise that I was going to mention something about the filters. Across the top of the page here are filters. There are a whole lot of options if you click on this little carrot here and you can do a lot with all of that so that you can only see audiobooks or only see things that don't have a wait list or there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that that is one of those things that is covered in those um, documents that i'm going to be sending if you're interested in learning more about that that's kind of like a power user uh, option but it is there for you but right now i'm just looking for a world of curiosities by louise penny and ah, here it is. A couple of things that I want to draw your attention to with that. Um, this one over here on the left is the ebook, and this one over here is the audiobook. And you can tell the difference because this one is a rectangle that looks like a book cover. This one has a square that looks like an audiobook cover. And the audiobooks always have a little. Um, headphones i guess that's supposed to be icon with the with the length of time of the recording underneath it so that's an easy way to tell the difference between the two because they will both show up in your search results together the other thing i want to draw your attention to is in the corner of each listing there's this little icon here and you'll notice for these two it looks different this one with the plus 
means oh. actually I don't know if you can see the little thing that pops up on my cursor but it's that means the title status is that it is available to borrow right now I know you can also see that it says borrow here over here for the audiobook the audiobook is not available right now there's a little bit of a wait for it and you can tell because instead of a plus it's got a little clock and it says placeholder So let me show you what placing a hold looks like. It's pretty easy. Let's say I think I am interested in the audiobook version of that. We're going to open up the audiobook here, and you can see that they give you a lot of information, um, a description of the title and um, other information about what it is. And then if you say, yeah, you know what, I think I'm, I'll wait for that. I'm going to put a hold on it. You can click the button that says place hold, and a screen will pop up here. It gives you um, an approximate idea of the amount of time that you will have to wait. And you just click the place hold button. And it says, OK, I've placed the hold and I'm second in line for that book. Now I'm going to go back. That's, how, that's it's as simple as that to place a hold. And I will also mention um, a little bit later what a couple of tricks about how to manage your holds when we talk about notifications. Now, okay, I would like the audiobook, but now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'll get started with the ebook version since it's available now and just read the beginning on my own before I get to the audiobook. So maybe I think I would like to borrow the ebook version. So I'm going to go into that book and I'm going to click on borrow. And it'll pop up here and say, You want to borrow it? Borrow for 21 days? Yes. Please wait. Okay. So now that I've got this book borrowed, um, just briefly, I'm going to show you what the reading in Libby looks like. You do have the option for a lot of items if you use a Kindle to send the items over to your Kindle. That involves logging into your Amazon account, so I'm not going to show you what that looks like right here. But the Libby app itself actually has a really great uh, reading interface as well. You can see when you click on Open Book that it gives you the option to do Kindle or Libby. I'm going to say to do it right here in the Libby app. Okay. And the book loads up. Oh, and. Okay. So when you're in the reader, a couple of things that you want to know is you click uh, or tap if you're using a touchscreen device on the right hand side of the page to move a page forward on the left side of the page to move back. If you want to look, I'm just going to like scroll through a few pages here to get into the actual book. OK, if you want to look at where you are within the book, you can click or tap right in the middle of the screen and the navigation at the bottom will show up that shows you, you know, what page out of how many you are and what chapter you're on. And you can click in the middle again to get rid of it. The other thing I really want to make sure you know about the ebook is that there are great options for what it looks like. One of the big pluses of ebooks is that you can change the size of the text yourself. So I can make the text bigger if I want to. I can make it a white screen, a medium screen, or a dark screen, and you can even change the font. Okay. Now, just to reorient everybody really quickly, um, this is my shelf because these are the items that I have checked out. And that is at the bottom here in this little item that looks like a pile of books. So if you want to browse, you go to the one that's a library building. If you want to search, you go to the magnifying glass. And the shelf, which is where you'll find all the items that you've checked out, is the one that looks like a pile of books. Um, you can see I have an audiobook here on my screen, and that is also pretty simple to navigate. The audiobooks on Libby are really great to use. When you open it up, you can just play it. Um, I don't really want to make you all listen to where the crawdads sing right now, but it's pretty straightforward. And you have some options up here in terms of the speed that the voice reads at and things like that. So. Both the ebooks and the audiobooks are very customizable. Um, 
it's not really anything super important to get into, but you might be wondering what this, if we've got the search, the library, the shelf, this last one that looks like a clock is your timeline. That'll just basically give you a list of everything you've ever checked out or put on hold, like a history. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about is um, this menu in the middle, which is the Libby menu. There's a couple of things here that I wanna make sure that you know about. Number one is, um, if you have more than one library card, this is the place to manage that. So you may have cards from other library systems, which you can also put into your app by clicking on add library. Or let's say you have more than one family member that wants to use Libby with their own library card on the same device. You can click on manage cards to add other cards. The second thing that I want to point out from the Libby menu is the settings. Um, and the most important thing that I want to show you about there is notifications. So again, under Libby menu, settings, notifications, this is where you can make sure that Libby tells you when you have a hold ready, when you have a loan that is going to be going back soon because all books that you borrow are automatically returned at the end of the loan period. And you have the option of it being um, not getting notified for whatever it is, a menu badge, which is like a little dot that shows up at the bottom of the app. Or if you're on a browser, an email notification. If you are uh, using a phone or a tablet, you can actually get a push notification which is like just the same kind of notification that you would get for a text message or from your other apps. You can have Livy pop up a little um, notification like that. I really like to make sure that I have that type of notification for the hold ready so that when I get a book that's ready for me as a hold, I can check it out right away before that hold expires. Um, but you can choose whatever options you want for all of this. And it's good to have that set up just how you like it. So make sure you go through those so you don't miss anything. And then finally, the last thing that I want to point out about Libby is that if you do end up uh, in a situation where you're not sure what to do when you're using Libby, this menu also has a button that says get some help. And that will take you to a place where there's frequently asked questions, but there's also a link to the Libby help website, which has lots of great articles and videos that will help you with any kind of problem that you have when you are using the service. So I hope that everybody feels eager to get out there and listen to some audiobooks and check out some ebooks with Libby. And now I'm going to pass it over to Amy so that she, oh, actually, should we do Libby questions first? I think we said we were going to do Libby questions first. Do we have any yeah. Libby questions, Tim? So I'm going to give everyone like a minute to put their question into the question and answer section. You'll see what looked like two uh, chat boxes in the word Q and A. Uh, while we're waiting, I will talk about the things I love about Libby, which is sometimes I'm waiting for my son to get out of like a swim lesson and I will just pop on and I'll pick up a magazine and I'll flip through the magazine while I'm at the Y. Another great thing was when uh, we were traveling and I was able to download like 15 books to bring on the plane with my son so that when he suddenly decided he's off Diary of a Wimpy Kid, I have a bunch of other books and I didn't have to travel with 15 pounds of books. So I really, really, I'm a personal Libby user and I love it very much. We do have a question. Um, I, again, I'm sorry, there's a, an unfortunate problem with the links that we sent, so I don't know your names unless you write them. Uh, but what are smart tabs and how do I use them? Um, Oh yes, the smart tags, okay. So when I stop my screen share, which is <laughs> fine because I'll just say this about it. That's actually something that is covered also in that document that, I, that I'm gonna be sending out, the tips and tricks document. But essentially you can use those um, tags to keep track of um, items that you're interested in borrowing, items that you have borrowed, maybe items where you looked at the sample and then you didn't do anything else with it, but just so that you know that you looked at it before. And so you can, um, maybe you have a book club that you're a part of and you wanna put a tag on all of the books that are for your book club. It's basically just a way for you to keep personal lists. 
using uh, the items within Libby. And specifically the smart tags, there are a couple of tags that kind of go by themselves. So there's a book that I've borrowed, smart tag, and it will automatically put that tag on every book that you borrow through Libby. So that's why they call that one a smart tag. But you can tag anything that you want. Like for instance, I had never heard of a world of curiosities. As we were looking through, I was like, oh, that looks interesting. So I actually went in to my Libby and put a little tag on it to say I wanted it. And I was also excited to see N.K. Jemison heavily featured. She's one of my favorite fantasy authors. And later this month, she will be the featured author at a Writers and Books event. If you Google Writers and Books, if you're interested in N.K. Jemison, this is just a commercial for something else because I really <laughs> like her. And now we're talking about books and I could do this all day. Yep. And, and that book was featured at the top of the Libby page because I believe we are offering that as a, as a no wait list item uh, for this time period leading up to when she comes. Wonderful. Um, we have two other questions. How does Overdrive and Libby differ? I'm always using Overdrive. Okay. So Overdrive is the name of the company. Libby is the app. If you have been using the Overdrive app, that is actually, I thought that it already stopped working, but maybe it's still hanging on in certain situations. Um, you know, there's not a, a difference in the content. You're going to see the same books and audiobooks, whichever one you're using, if you're in Monroe County System page. Um, there are just some kind of user differences. So, for example, if you're using the OverDrive app, you can't access those great courses videos that I talked about. Anything that's considered an extra, you can't get to through the OverDrive app. Or um, in Libby, all of your loans from, like if you have multiple library cards, everything shows up on the same bookshelf that you've borrowed. In the OverDrive app, they're separate. Just little things like that that are different. Um, you know, and if you ever have a question about something that you were a bit long time overdrive user and you want to go to the Libby app, um, there's a lot of those things in the help page can help you to transfer over. Also, um, Libby has some other kind of extras like it, you know, like if you have uh, Sonos speakers in your house, it can connect to your speakers, you know, like flashy tech things like that. Um, so the OverDrive company is really encouraging everybody to move over to the Libby app, even if you're really comfortable with the OverDrive app and you've been loving it for a long time. I know it's hard to change, but I actually think the Libby app is is really, it's very user friendly. And there's one more question. With OverDrive, we could recommend a book and then be put on the hold list automatically if the library purchased it. Can we do that on Libby? Um, so my understanding of that is not just yet but that's it's coming soon that's the the libby people are working on that they know that's a feature that people want so at the moment no um but keep keep your eyes open because it may be around soon all right um okay. and that was the end of our questions for the libby section okay then amy take it away and let's find out about hoopla all right let's talk a little hoopla and then get my screens going here. All right. So, uh, well, Hoopla is a digital streaming service for library users to access ebooks, e audiobooks music, movies, television shows, and a few other goodies that I will get to later. So you can access Hoopla using portable devices like smartphones and tablets, uh, through the internet browser on your computer, and on TVs with streaming capabilities. Hoopla is not compatible with dedicated e-readers, like for instance, like the Kindle Paperwhite, you need like that tablet style. Uh, all right, some of the pros for using Hoopla are that uh, because Hoopla is a streaming platform, there are no wait lists or no need to place holds. Uh, the platform allows for the simultaneous use of titles, which makes Hoopla a great choice for book clubs or for people who just don't like to wait. 
Um, you know, uh, Hoopla offers more formats than Libby. Uh, you can access comics, music, movies, television shows, and there's some access to curated collections and lists that are nice that we'll, we will take a look at. Um, some of the cons, Hoopla has a smaller selection of items than Libby. Um, the collection isn't developed by MCLS library staff like, like Libby. Hoopla is actually controlled by uh, Midwest Tape, which, you know, is not an evil empire, but it's not your, you know, your local librarians. Um, there are some loan limits with uh, Hoopla. Most libraries in the area allow users five borrows per month. Uh, these borrows will reset on the first of every month, and then you can borrow, you know, another five. Uh, you can have, you know, multiple items out at a time. And I've noticed that some libraries set a collective daily borrow limit, meaning, okay, with Hoopla, every time you borrow a title, like the library pays for that. So some of the libraries have it set up, so they must not want to exceed spending a certain amount of money per day on Hoopla. So, you know, once a certain amount of money hits, you'll get a, a message saying, the collective daily borrow limit set by your library has been reached and will be reset at midnight. So I'll show you how you can favorite an item. So if that happens to you, you know, you can uh, use the app again the next day and get that item once there's like a new, uh, once it's a new day and the library is no longer maxed out on Hoopla borrows. One other thing that can be, you know, not a, a horrible con, but, you know, a con nonetheless is that the loan periods vary by format. So there's a little bit more to keep track of. Like with Libby, you know, you're basically looking at 21 day borrow limits across the board. For Hoopla, you know, you get books for three weeks, video content for three days, and music and binge passes for seven days. So everything is like spelled out in the app, but there's a little bit more to keep track of. And unlike Libby, Hoopla is not available countywide. So um, I, you know, decided it was worth talking about in this presentation because uh, out of Assembly Member Lunsford's constituents, like I know it's available in Penfield, Fairport, and Pittsburgh. So a good deal of, of the service area has this service available. All right, and I'm gonna uh, flip over to a demo in just a moment, but I just wanted to show, this is a screenshot of what the registration looks like for Hoopla if you're a first time user. So when you're a first time user, you're gonna need to download the free Hoopla digital app from your device's app store. Um, if you're using your laptop or desktop computer, you can simply visit hoopladigital.com, but you will need to use a current web browser like Google, Google Chrome to sign up all you need to have is an email address and a library card. So it's not, you know, a super rigorous, they don't ask you a million questions to get registered. What you see on this slide is, uh, you know, you'll need to do your, put in your email, you'll have to create a password, select your library and enter your card number. Um, after that, I find that Hoopla like keeps me logged in as does, as does Libby. So you don't have to keep logging in, in and out all the time. All right. All right, so now I'll do my uh, a little demo of Hoopla. So unlike Libby, Hoopla on the desktop does look a little bit different than it does on the app. So I'm gonna show you on the desktop and then I'll flip back over to my presentation slides where I have some screenshots. So, you know, I can show you how it looks a little bit different if you're using a tablet or a phone. So, all right, before I get into uh, browsing and borrowing titles, let's take a quick look at the settings and help menus that are available. So settings, you're gonna look for this little uh, gear shift. And then there are some certain, some different tabs up at the top that you can go through. Like I, you know, I won't go through everything here, but one big thing for me is I turned off emails because I didn't want to get publicity emails. Maybe you don't mind. I just felt like I'm always overwhelmed by emails. So I turned that off. I like to have my browsing history turned on to see what I have borrowed in the past. 
And then, you know, there are some other things. If you needed to reset your password, you would do that in here. If you wanted to change the email address that you've affiliated with Hoopla, you would do it there. And there is a kids mode that, you know, if you were setting a, a child up, you can make it so they can only see like kids content. And then I just wanted to show you too, where you'll find some patron support in uh, frequently, frequently asked questions. So if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, sorry if I'm making you seasick here. Down here under our communities, there's a, uh, you'll see it says patron support FAQs. And this is a good place to find, you know, some more information if you are struggling and you can also of course contact your local library, but they've got some good information in here. Like for instance, I'm not gonna talk about using how you can use Hoopla on your TV, but you could find information here about that. Um, or if you're using it with like Apple TV or with Amazon Fire. All right, let's explore our home screen, also known as like My Hoopla. So of course here up at the top, uh, there are some different settings under My Hoopla. You can, um, you know, we'll, we'll go through everything, but you can see what items you have currently borrowed. You can see your favorites. You can see your past history. If you have a past history, if you're not a new user, we'll look at the different ways that you can browse. Of course, we have like a search bar. If you have like one, one item in mind and you wanna see if that's available, you can start there. Uh, similar to Libby, you know, there's just some goodies on the home page. Like, you know, you can see things that because I do have a borrowing history, you can see some things I recently borrowed. They make some recommendations based on my past history. Some things that I have favorited. And I know like, you know, we'll get into binge passes if you're like, what the heck is a binge pass? We see some stuff that's trending, you know, what's popular right now in all the different uh, formats. So yeah, you know, everyone's home screen will probably look a little bit different, but that is how mine looks. So let's get into doing a, a little search here. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use a popular author for a search just because I know there's gonna be some content here. So I'm gonna put in Debbie McComer. And as you can see here, we got some stuff that came up. There's actually quite a bit. If you're a Debbie McComer fan, you hit the jackpot with Hoopla. There's a lot on here. So uh, there are some like bundles you know, that this has like a, a couple books from, for instance, the Brides collection. And if you keep scrolling down, you know, you get to some single titles. If you wanna know more about an item, you know, you go ahead and click on one. Here, it's gonna let me know, you know, what year it was published, how many pages. It's letting me know that this is book one in the Dakota series. You can read a description. It lets you know how many days this is going to be available if you borrow it. This is where you would favorite an item. Like if you were like, uh, I want to come back to this. I don't want to forget that this is on here, but I don't want it today. And when you're using the app, it actually says the word favorite next to it too. So it's a little bit harder to miss. I feel like I could easily miss this on the, using the desktop. But um, so I'm going to say, okay, I'm not going to get this one, but I'm going to give it a, give it a favorite. So I remember that it's here. But instead, I want to get more bang for my buck. So I want this whole Brides collection. And this lets me know it has three, three books in it. I'm going to say borrow it. It lets me know, hey, you know, are you sure you want to borrow this? It's going to be available for 21 days. Yeah, I'm good with that. And then there's some uh, similar authors down here too. So if you're like, you know, if there's an author that you like and you've really read all their stuff, maybe you can discover someone new. All right, let's take a look at, at the browsing feature. Um, you know, Marin and I were in another one of our coworkers were talking about the other day how 
we like to use Hoopla best for browsing, not for finding a specific item, just because sometimes, I don't know, they just don't have as much as Libby. Sometimes they just don't have the specific item, but I feel like I always find something browsing, if that, if that makes sense. So let's take a look. Let's browse. Let's browse some ebooks for a moment here. So again, you're going to get like a, a main screen that's going to show you just some stuff that's popular, um, some stuff that's trending, things that are recommended to me, what's new on Hoopla, and then kind of how uh, Marin showed you for Libby. They're going to show you some stuff that is. Uh, timely or at least it showed me some yes like hispanic heritage month titles we've got some spooky season halloween stuff so you know this screen is always going to be changing but i'm going to go back up here because i what i want to show you is how you can do more browsing so okay genres and collections this is a great way to browse so i'm going to say see more and so you can browse here by genre or by collections. And I'll just give show you a quick example of both. So under genres, as you can see here, they give you a lot of different uh, genres and subject areas. I'm gonna say mysteries, because I feel like a lot of people like mysteries. So you actually have to go under fiction though, because mysteries isn't pulled out. So I'm gonna look under fiction. And then as you can see, they really break it down. There's really something for everybody here. But uh, here's mystery and detective. And then from here, you know, you can either say, see all mystery and detective if you don't want to get this granular, I guess. But just for the sake of this example, I'm just going to say, okay, let's see some private investigators. And then this is a little fluke that I noticed that this does not happen when you're using it like on a tablet or using, using the app on a tablet or a phone. But I noticed that, you know, I said I wanted to see ebooks, and this is showing me audiobooks and ebooks. So you can easily remedy that. Hopefully, Hoopla will remedy it that this themselves, but you can just, you know, use the sidebar and say, okay, just show me, show me the ebook format. All right, now to show you the other uh, browsing option for collections. I'll just go over to audiobooks for a change of scenery. So, okay. So again, we'll go into that genres and collections. And this time we're gonna switch, not do genres, take a look at the different collections here. So there will be some featured collections up at the top. And you know, these are gonna be some things that are seasonal, some things that they, I don't know, they just wanna highlight. But then if you go down to all collections, you know, they do put together some nice stuff here. So a couple that stand out to me, I was like, ooh, celebrity narrators. That's a good entry point if you wanted to like get into audiobooks, but your your mind wanders or something. Generally, when there's a celebrity narrator, they're a really good narrator. So it's a it's a good way to see if if audiobooks are for you. A couple other things that caught my eye. They have some stuff that's great for book clubs. So if you're doing like a book, uh, you know, if you're running a book club and you have people who like digital formats, you know, you could use Hoopla for that. And there's New York Times bestsellers. And again, that's not gonna just show you the current bestsellers. It's gonna be, you know, other older, older New York Times bestsellers as well. All right, we'll take a look at a couple different here things here. So let's do a, for the search bar, you know, you can search, under everything like I did, and that's always going to work for you, but you can get more specific. If you want to say, okay, let's do a search for movies. Get Debbie McComer out of there. Okay. So I'm going to say, I think I'm going to do, I think I saw that Three Amigos is available on here. So, okay. So, you know, you can, if you want to see if something specific that you want is out there, go for it. But don't forget that the browsing option is a good one, especially for DVDs, I think, or for, for video format. Another way that you could search is instead of like Three Amigos, I know that like Steve Martin is in there. Or to say if you have another favorite actor or actress, you could try that. 
So then this will show me, you know, there's not a tremendous amount of Steve Martin content in here, but you can see they do have a couple different movies. And then, you know, the search isn't completely clean because then we get into other Steves like Steve Jobs, Steve Byrne, Steve-O. So, but it does, it will hit that stuff that is uh, most relevant first. All right, I'm not going to go through every single format just because there's a bunch, but you should definitely explore them all on, on your own because it's pretty fun. But I am going to show you the binge passes because that's pretty unique. So, okay. So binge passes. I'm going to scroll down so you can see them all. Uh, binge passes give you unlimited access to curated collections with a single borrow for seven days. So, you know, it's another good way to get the most bang for your buck, I guess, just like those bundles of books, if you can get through them all in time. So some of these are geared toward kids, you know, adults can still enjoy kid things, or some of them are definitely geared toward adults. So a couple of them that I wanted to highlight here are, oops, are Hoopla magazines. And just to show you quickly, I'm going to click on it. And if you want to know what magazines are included, you can click here on what titles are included and it will show you and there's a whole bunch of stuff on here. And whenever I look at magazines, I always learn about a new one that exists. Like I have never heard of Angels on Earth magazine, but it is a thing. But so there's all different, you know, all different uh, magazines on here. And I won't scroll through just because I don't want to make you all seasick here. So let me go back to the binge passes here. Uh, a couple other ones I wanted to point out, out are they've got the Great Courses Video Library Collection. I know that you can access those through Libby too, like Marin was saying. Uh, Curiosity Stream up here gives you access to a collection of documentaries and nonfiction series covering science, nature, travel, history, technology, and more. You got your Hallmark movies now. So if you're not seeing enough Hallmark movies on TV, you can get your fix by watching even more on Hoopla. And this is a new one since the last time I had actually checked in on these binge passes, this puzzle passes. I know that like, you know, all these different brain puzzles are really popular and that, you know, they're good for, they're good to keep us all sharp. So, so don't forget that those are there and the service does like change out the binge passes every now and then. So you will, you know, you'll see different stuff popping up here. All right, let's get back to seeing that item I borrowed and, and seeing where those favorites go. So let's look back here at My Hoopla. So My Hoopla will take you back to that first main screen, but if you want to see the items that you favorited, if you go to favorites, these are all the items that I've given like the little heart to that I wanted to go back and, uh, you know, potentially borrow in the future. And that's also under this tab where you're going to find, you know, your, your history and where you, what you have currently borrowed. So these are the two things that I have signed out on my, um, signed out in Hoopla. You can see this is the one that I borrowed today and you can see it says it returns in 21 days. And this is one I took out a couple you know, several days ago, and it lets me know that this one is going back in 15 days. And it lets you know here how many more titles you have per month. So that's nice too. So if you want to read your, your title, open it up, say that I want to read it. Let's see, it's being, I just, I'm just going to try to bump into, okay, into the text. You can use this menu here to do many of the same uh, settings changes that Marin showed you in Hoopla. So if you go down into settings, you can adjust the font, the font size, you can change like the background color, um, you can change the margins, you know, you can set yourself up for whatever is the easiest on your eye. So I'm going to flip back over to the presentation here. And I just kind of want to show you the difference of, you know, what Hoopla is going to look like when you're in an app, because it is a little bit different. So I want to draw your attention to two menus. 
one is going to be down at the bottom and one is up at the top. So the one at the bottom, like I'm going to start with like my hoopla. If you have my hoopla selected, these are the options you're going to have at the top. You're going to see like that home screen. You can, you'll be able to see the items that you have borrowed if you click on borrowed. And if you click on favorites, you can view those favorites. Again, returning to that bottom menu, if you click on books, then up here, you'll have options, all the different book format options. So you can view audiobooks. If you click on comics, you'll see the comics. Click on ebooks, you can browse ebooks. Uh, the next one, you know, is all the different uh, video formats. So there you can say you can toggle between uh, movies and television. Here we go for, uh, this one is under, I'm sorry, my toolbar keeps covering it. It's called, this one, this menu option is more, and that's where you'll find your binge passes and your music. And then this is what it's going to look like when you open an item to learn more about it, and you can favorite it. This time it has the heart and the word favorite, or you can click borrow. Uh, when you go in to see your borrowed items, the view will look like this. And then when you're actually like inside either a book or an audio book, if you're in an ebook, you can access those settings by uh, like to change the size of the text and the theme color and all that by clicking on the like upper class, upper case, lower case A. And then in an ebook, these are what the settings look like. And I'm a big fan of the sleep setting because you can set it for a certain amount of time. So if you fall asleep, it will stop playing and you know you only have to go back like 15 minutes to find your spot instead of like, you know, it playing all night long. <laughs> all right. So that is what I had to say about Hoopla. I just have a real short thing to say about Medici. So I'm going to just go through that and then we can do the questions after that if you're okay with that. So Medici TV is a database that is available through the Monroe County Library System. Uh, you're going to need to access it through the Monroe County Library System website, and I'm going to show you how to find that right now. Okay, so uh, libraryweb.org is the Monroe County Library System website. When you're there, if you click on databases, it gives you a list of databases in alphabetical order. So I know I'm going to go down to Medici TV. And because I'm here in the library, I don't have to enter my library card number. But if you are at home, before you get to this screen, you're going to get prompted to enter your library card number and your last name. But it's, this is set up by IP address. So if you're using it in a library, you can kind of skip over that spot. So uh, this platform is home to the world's largest video on demand catalog in the classical music industry. And there's over 4,000 concerts, ballets, documentaries, master classes, and jazz programs available to stream. So you're going to find both rising talents and established superstars. Um, you don't need to set up account, an account, but you can. And to the best of my knowledge, one reason you might want to set up an account is if you want to favorite things that you want to go back and watch. If you don't care about doing that, I don't see any other reason why you would need to set up an account. Uh, you could just simply log in with your library card. So the MCLS subscription doesn't allow you to like use the Medici TV app that is available. Um, that, you know, if you are looking in like the Apple store or the Google Play store or whatever your device store is, you're, you're going to want to always access this by going through the Monroe County Library System website. So basically, you know, it, this is very user friendly. If, you know, if, if operas are your thing, you know, click on operas at the top. There are things that they do like live performances. There's videos on demand. But then you can like do things like, okay, if you have a favorite composer, 
you know, you could select somebody from the list, or if you have a favorite performer, or if there's a certain time period, or if you, uh, you know, want subtitles, you know, most of us are probably going to choose English, but maybe if you are a speaker of another language, you're not going to choose English. So, so yeah, very, you know, if you are into like, you know, these things like opera, ballet, concerts, I think that jazz, classical music, I think that you will really enjoy this, uh, this database. So I just wanted to make sure that it's on your radar, even though it's not a, not a reading app per se. So I'm going to stop the share here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we are now going to do the final Q&A. So any questions that you have about anything that was presented today, um, or I suppose if you have questions about other digital library options that may have been listed in that database, um, you can ask now. Um, in the meantime, we'll give people a few minutes. Um, I want to thank both Amy and Marin. We're very, very lucky here in Monroe County to have such a robust library system. I travel, you know, to other parts of the state and I get to see how other library systems work. And actually, I was talking to somebody from Tennessee today who moved from New York to Tennessee and was lamenting how horrible <laughs> their Tennessee library options are versus everything they had in New York. And I think that's a real testament to how spectacular our libraries are. Uh, we're very, very lucky here. Uh, and I want to thank the uh, many people who help make our library system work. Um, I am not seeing any questions, uh, but as Marin said, she's going to be sending material to our office, which we will make available to everyone whose email address we have from today. Uh, and we will probably also fi figure out a way to have that uh, posted on our um, website, on our assembly website to make sure people have access to what they need. If you do have questions later, you can reach out either to the Monroe County Library System or to our office and we will get those questions answered for you. Um, oh, wait, questions have popped up. Okay. What about um, accessing periodicals like national newspapers and magazines? So for, uh, you know, there were definitely periodicals through that binge pass option in, um, in Hoopla. Um, does Libby still have mag? Do you know Marin off the top of your head if Libby still has magazines? I know there was in the past, but I haven't used it in so long. I'd have to check and follow up. I don't think they do because I think that was one of it was one of those extras, and I I think that we opted to have the uh, great courses instead of the magazines. But you can still get magazines through Hoopla. As okay, for there's... newspapers, neither of these services that we talked about today have newspapers. But a lot of the libraries have like, I know like in Pittsburgh, I know here, I'm sure at other libraries, it's just, there's so much, I hard, it's hard to keep track of what everyone offers. But like, if you are in the central library, you can access the New York Times uh, digital and for Pittsburgh, same. I believe you do have to be at the Pittsburgh library to, to access it, but they're digital edition. And I will say that I'm looking on my Libby app that is blurred out as I pointed at my camera. And there are magazines, there are over 5,000 magazines still on Libby, including The New Yorker, Us Weekly, Women's World, Hello, Prevention, New Scientists, like real, regular, supermarket rack magazines. Like I'll, I'm not going to pay for The Economist, but I'll take out The Economist on Libby and pop through a few things while I'm waiting for session to start. That's awesome because oh, yeah. magazines have gotten so expensive. So expensive. <laughs> They're, it's wild. And I, and I don't so. want to read the whole magazine. I want to read these three <laughs> stories. I stand um, corrected. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know either. I'm glad that well, you, now, you're using Well, now, this is what I'm here for. Okay. It's, the <laughs> um, it's because it's one of the only things I use Libby for. <laughs> so I was like, that's why I know that. Uh, so books from Hoopla cannot be read on Kindles, correct? So you can, if you have like a Kindle Fire but not the dedicated e-reader type, like the paper white. So if you can access other apps or email or uh, web browsers on your Kindle, then yes. But if all you can do is read audiobooks, then no. Right. And the last one was not a question. I'm new to this service and many thanks. So thank you oh. so much. Well, you're welcome. Um, 
So thank you everybody for coming today. This was great turnout for a Thursday afternoon during work time. Mm -hmm. So like, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate uh, Amy and Marin for giving us their time. Uh, this will be made available on um, our Facebook page. So if you have friends who miss this or family members you'd like to send it to, it should be up in the next 24 hours. Thank you guys so much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you.